Hey guys, um, this is Austin back with another video. Uh, before we get into this video, I wanted to welcome you back if you're already a subscriber. Um, but if you are a new subscriber, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. Click a like and leave us a comment down below. That really helps out our channel. And we really thank you that. Uh, thank you for that. Um, today is going to be kind of an educational video. Um, I just want to do something else. We've got some super exciting things house tour wise. Uh, coming up in the next week or so. Um, so we, we're going to get back to that. But in the meantime, we're going to go over some things that you need to know whenever you're purchasing your new manufactured home. Um, today, we're going to talk about if you have not already purchased property, what you need to be looking for and how um, you could go about getting into a property that is right for a manufactured home. The first thing we want to go over today is going to be floodplain. As you know, Eastern North Carolina has a lot of flood zones. Uh, they, you know, vary from city to county, and they change uh, sometimes yearly <laughs> uh, with the last couple hurricanes we've had. But one of the things that you could do is before you even get interested in a property, <clears throat> you can check and see if it's in a floodplain. Now. I don't want you to freak out. If that is your dream property, you could get hooked up all on the trees or the lakes or, or whatever is on that property. It does not necessarily mean that that property is a no-go. All you need to know is that with that, you might have some uh, additional expenses to raise the home above our standard 36-inch set. There is a uh, lot of different uh, rules and regulations that go into setting a home in a uh, flood plain. It does not mean that it can't be done because trust us, we have set many in a flood plain, sometimes on stilts that are 10 foot in the air, sometimes on just a high brick foundation. So there is a way around it if that is, if you've already owned the property or if it's just a property that you've absolutely fell in love with. Uh, so going over all of that, I am going to, of course, link some websites below to help you find out if the property of your dreams is in a flood plain. And there is, like I said, many ways around it that we can help you if that is the property you are wanting to do <laughs> or wanting to move on to. And as you saw there, um, there are many different websites that you could choose from. I just showed you the one that I typically use. The next step in figuring out if a property is right for a manufactured home, of course, is zoning. There is so many different counties, cities, and municipalities that <clears throat> um, either do not care or prefer a stick-built home. Um, but that does not mean it is a no-go either. Uh, if the property is in the proper zoning, uh, we could definitely set the home. We just have to make sure that it is correct. But the good thing about that is, is you can call your local county. Um, it is called the, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. <clears throat> um, it is called zoning and planning. Uh, so, and they'll tell you if that address is zoned for a manufactured home and if it is okay to put it there. Because the last thing you want to do is purchase a property and not be able to put the home there. So, of course, whenever you're looking for property, that is one major thing that I would suggest looking for. Make sure that it is in a... Um, correctly zoned area for a manufactured home. Now, there is two types of uh, areas that are typically zoned for manufactured and zoned for um, uh, stick build. Um, of course, most of the time, if you're in a city limits, um, it is strictly zoned for stick build or just modular. Now, um, here in Eastern North Carolina, I have personally put um, manufactured homes in a um, city limits. Um, so it is, it is very, just because it is in a city limits, it does not necessarily mean that it is zoned for strictly stick built or modular. Um, and then if it's in a rural area, uh, it does, uh, on the flip side of that, on the rural area, it does not necessarily mean that it is zoned for a manufactured home. Some uh, smaller towns or municipalities, if you're within their limits, still have control over that area. And they could say that they do not um, want a manufactured home in within their city limits or municipality limits. Um, so there is quite a few different nuances to that. But of course, whatever... Um, uh, local government is there, then you could call them at city at zoning and planning and you would be able to figure out 
exactly what is zoned in that area. So that is a, a really exciting tool to know and to have. Um, and, you know, help you uh, in your new land search for your new manufactured home. All right. So the next big step is what uh, we call like utility costs. Uh, utilities is any kind of uh, land improvement, which in our industry means septic, water, um, sewer, if you have if you have connection to sewer power, and if you're using uh, you know one or two of the others, I'm going to go over uh, all three of those right now. Now the first one would be septic or sewer, um, and of course uh, we we can help you once you come in, or you could call the county yourself to see if that address is uh, accessible by a sewer system, or do we have to put down a septic tank. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more in detail about a septic tank. Sewer systems are pretty self-explanatory. If you are able to connect to a sewer system, then we would just pay the tap fees or roll the tap fees into your loan. Um, and then we would be connected and we'd go about our business. Now, with a septic tank, there is one thing that you have to have done, and that is a perk test. Now, this is handled by the customer in Down East Homes Company. Some people um, do it for you, some people don't. Typically in Down East Homes Company, um, we let the customer call and uh, about the piece of property and get a perk test done. Now, sometimes the landowner that you're purchasing it from has already done this and we kind of know where we need to go and sometimes they have not. It just totally depends on the landowner and what he or she has decided to do. Now, if they have not done it, you would just call Environmental Health and get a call, call let's call it a perk test, and you would call them, pay their fees, and tell them to come out and perk the property. Now, this could go one or two ways. Um, this is kind of some of the extra costs that I was talking about with the floodplain and everything. So this is kind of a, like, like I was saying with the extra cost with the floodplain, there might be additional costs with the perk test. For example, um, it, the land might not perk, which means drain properly. And, um, but that does not necessarily mean that again, that that property is a no-go. There are other systems called mound systems. If the county will allow us to put those in, um, of course that is an additional cost and is above and beyond what a normal septic tank would cost. And, and, and all of those costs associated would have to be quoted out by a septic tank installer there. Like I said before, there, there's many different quotes and prices. We don't have like a, even a ballpark when it comes to mound systems or septic tanks, we just get it quoted out. Um, now, with all that being said, uh, there is a couple of other utilities that we need to be uh, mindful of as well. Um, with water, there is either going to be a tap through county water or city water, or you're going to have to tap in, or you're going to have to put into a well. Um, I personally have not done a whole lot of wells, but I know some people are really in a rural area and they do not have access to public water. So, um, of course, with just like with the tap fees with the sewer, we would just pay the tap fees if it's connected to county water or, or city water. And then they would um, have a pipe and our, and our plumbers would connect to that tap. And that's simple and easy. Um, on the little bit more difficult side or more expensive side is you would have to dig a well. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't just depending on where you live. But that is something that you can check into um, whenever you're looking for land. Now, if you did do a well, it is a little bit more expensive most of the time to dig a well than it is to just install a tap. And those are all things that you just have to kind of consider um, whenever you're purchasing a home. Because the one thing you don't want to do is on the loan that you're getting, spend all your money on land improvements just because it's a nice piece of property. Um, I have had that conversation with many, many customers. And sometimes they still go forward with it because they've got the budget for it. But if you're already on a smaller budget and you want to make sure you get a really nice home, I would prefer to see you have a nicer home than just have, um, you know, a, a lot of money tied up in land improvements. And you could go either way, of course, is, is totally your opinion um, or uh, your option. So those are those are kind of the main things um, that I wanted to go over. One last thing would be power. Um, there's a couple of ways that power companies do this. Um, typically, whenever you start a new account, they uh, make you... Uh, pay a deposit. Now, if it's new construction, depending on the power company, sometimes they will charge you to run power lines because it's a new, and then because it's a new account or a new property, but sometimes they do not. Um, just solely depending on the power company, 
And we want to make sure that you as the customer are totally prepared for those things. Now, um, what you could do on the power side is you could call and say, hey, this is a new construction. What do you guys typically do? Do you go overhead or do you go underground? Meaning, is the power lines ran overhead like you see traditionally um, or are they um, run underground? Uh, that means that there's a little bit more work involved when you're running underground, but with most new constructions, we do run stuff underground. Now that is totally at the discretion of the power company. Um, sometimes they require one way or the other. And, and it also depends on your property. Some properties require overhead. Some properties require underground, just depending on, you know, the location. And like I said, the power company, those are the main things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, of course, we want to hear from you and we want to hear if you have any questions, concerns, and don't be afraid to ask any questions. We would love, love, love to help you whenever you're searching for land. And of course, our website will be linked below for that if you have any questions. Um, one last thing before we do go, um, when you are purchasing property, if you wanted to and you did not want to, um, and I'm going to shift gears here for a second and talk about banking a little bit. If you wanted to use it as collateral, but you do not have the full cash up front to purchase the property, it does not hurt to ask. And I said, I ask because uh, some people will do this. Some people will not. It does not hurt to ask if you could do a rent to own option on some property and buy the property um, over a couple of years. Now, with that being said, we do not have to do that. We, as Downey's Homes, can get you with a bank and we can finance everything in together. So say that the property's worth uh, 15,000 and the home's worth 120,000, we could take those two, roll them together and make one loan and so you're real simple and easy and have one payment. It is totally up to you. With that option though, you do have to come up with a little bit of money down with most loans. Now, of course, if you have uh, VA or USDA, then those loans are 0% down and that's just how they are, just depending on if you can get qualified for those. And I am still going to do a banking video, guys. I'm just trying to get my thoughts together on that and how I need to talk about it. But I'm hoping next week um, we are going to have some super, super, really, really nice modulars to show. Um, I've got two getting ready to show in uh, Greenville and I'm super excited about them because they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, so keep that in mind. We will have some new stuff coming. And I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. And let me know how you like these videos about education and vlogs. And just let me know what you would like to see and what you would like to know um, so we can help you out in your new home purchase. And of course, guys, thank you for watching. Um, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. Hit that like um, leave a comment down below and we'll see you next time. Thank you.